Hello everybody, my name's Atley. Welcome back to my SnowRunner Hard Mode playthrough. We are in the Azov 73210. It's just coming into morning. I've moved the truck and trailer here off camera to save you the pain of the night viewing. It's just driving a delivering a trailer in the dark, so it's not like you missed anything really. And we're on tasks now. So see if I can attach that and I'm going to use the Azov with a large crane because I've created a self-imposed rule as most of you will know that I'm only going to use large cranes when the cargo is more, is greater than two slots so I'm not allowed to use a small crane if the cargo is greater than two slots so we're in the Azov uh, it's probably the last thing that this large crane needs to do on this particular map Black Badger Lake because I've got the Pacific with the red large crane on Greenwoods River. So, without further ado, let's get this cargo loaded. Legs down. And then this truck can tow the trailer and deliver the cargo because at the other end it needs to be craned off the trailer and onto a, a loading platform. So I can't just drive it there and deliver it with another truck. I need to take the large crane to the offloading point as well. That's about right. So much easier to use this big crane than it is the little ones. Pack that cargo and then basically drive out. What route do I use? Let's go this way. Drive out with the Azov. And if I did end up dropping the cargo, then I've got the correct crane to put it back on anyway. So it's not a bad combination for four slot. The Azov, as we know, is a very, very capable truck. Five axles, all wheel drive, always on. Diff lock, always on. Not a lot of stops he has of. Except chin trouble. I'm probably in raised suspension mode, I'm not sure. But if we get a chin issue, we'll check. We'll pull out through these rocks is a challenge. Get some tasks done and, and I don't know if I'll get to logging in this episode. But this as of is going to be my long logging um, vehicle of choice just because it can load it, it can self load long logs with a crane so as usual this is my long logging vehicle of choice not planning on bringing the Aramatsu for logging to this map let's see if I can get away with not doing that it depends. I don't think there's that much logging to do. Depends on the convenience of where the logging stations are. Because uh, if I don't bring the Aramatsu, I will need to use this one to load medium logs. So it just depends on whether it's convenient to have this drive to medium log locations. Trouble is, I think it's all useless winch points. That one seems to have taken hold on something. Just need to get through these rocks, really. I think we'll be alright then. Let me just check what this thing's suspension mode is. It looks like it's raised to me. Yeah, it was raised. I had to check. Oh, hello. Nearly lo losing the cargo there. Right. So now we should be good to go. Up here on the left is the Tatra Force. I used the Force to bring the trailer down to that unloading location. And then just parked it there in case I needed some support. 
And I've still got chains on, which is definitely not needed. So as I'm passing the garage, I will detach the trailer and pop into the garage and stick muds on this. Because I've definitely got the wrong tires for the map. I just didn't think about that when I deployed it and first equipped the crane and brought it out. So now we run to the garage, but on the way we will pass the step, which at the end of the last episode I tipped the step over on its side, a bit exuberant coming down off a hilltop with some vehicle spare parts and just hit a bad camber at pace and tipped it over. So I'll just use this big crane to put that back on its wheels. So a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned that I was approaching a particular milestone and we've hit a thousand subs and I've, I've done a community post and for anybody that's watching on catch up, obviously you know, this isn't new news for you, but the channel has hit a thousand subs and thank you so much. I'm so humbled by that. That's just incredible. It means the world to me. I can't stop thanking you for it. I will probably stop thanking you for it because you'll get bored of hearing me thank you for it. But I am very, very grateful. Subs do go up and down. So I normally, when it's a milestone, don't get too excited until I'm like a good 10 or so past. Because at one point, I think it hit 1,000 and then dropped to 999 and then went back up again and then dropped again. And so that's the nature of it. You know, the subscribers unsubscribe sometimes. So that's that's fine. Obviously, I prefer it if you all stayed subscribed, but I understand. The thing I wanted to mention, the reason, the reason I'm reiterating that point again now, is that I don't really, I, I haven't really had any preconceptions about how monetization works. And I'm still learning. It's a really complicated system from what I can tell. But the main thing is I've now got some control over adverts. And the obvious thing that I've done is I've disabled YouTube showing any mid-roll or unskippable adverts. And at the minute, you know, it's, it's not like I'm going to retire on the ad revenue anyway, right? It's at the minute, I'm a very small channel and the amount of money that the ad revenue might give me is pretty small. I'm not turning ads off completely because apparently if you do that, YouTube don't promote your videos because they want to make money out of you. The same as you want to make you want to make videos and get people watching them. YouTube only promote the ones or YouTube favor promoting the ones that have adverts enabled. So I'm not turning adverts off, but I just wanted to. Yeah, I have the one thing that's in my control that I as a viewer would find annoying. I've disabled mid roll and unskippable ads. Obviously, if you do watch ads or if you let them play till the end, then that adds to any revenue that might come my way. But I didn't... Let's see if I can do this with a crane without messing around too much. I didn't start this intending to become particularly a YouTuber. I know that sounds a bit daft because I've put quite a lot of work into this channel and this learning, but I did it to learn rather than to grow as a channel that makes sense um but if there was any possibility of ever giving up the day job and and being a full-time content creator i'd be i'd be lying if i said that wouldn't be like that that would be bliss right for me i would love that so yeah i i'm gonna be exploring what it means as the channel grows to to like make the most of ads but i'm personally not a fan of mid-roll adverts so therefore i've disabled them for you guys i don't know if this is going to work with a crane because i don't really get enough movement control i'll try again though i think i need a better attachment point maybe that one 
So I'll pull it in low, make it tight, and then see if it'll push it out and put it on its wheels. And then can I cajole it forward in a way that's going to be a bit safer? It doesn't just tip over again as soon as I get in the cab. Maybe that'll be alright. And then let's get the cargo reloaded. I might as well while I get the big crane. Restore the crane, turn off my engine, jump into there and see if I can safely back that and move it forward to a place where I feel it's stable. I'm not doing this delivery now, I'm just getting that cargo safe. We'll carry on with the oversized cargo delivery now. Just correcting the rash error from the end of the previous episode. Reminder to self, stop at the garage for tyres. Don't do the usual and blow right past and forget all about the fact that I said I would get tyres. Can't remember what tyres I've got in stock for this. Customize tires. I think tires will be the only thing. Oh, so it's got options for the new tires. Interesting. I haven't got any mud tires in stock. Hmm. OHSs. Or do I go pure mud? So I must have been using those before. I'm sure. I don't understand why I haven't got them in stock. Unless 50 inch just happens to fit another truck and I've put them on something else. I've got options to use these new ones. I like the look of these. I'm just going to check the website a sec. So I've just done a comparison on the tire comparison website. And as it says in the game, they are all the same rating. The MHSs and the DMHSs. They're basically 0.5 for asphalt. And then 2 and 2 for off-road and mud. Whereas OHS 2s are higher in dirt, I think they're 3, they're 1.5 asphalt, they're 1.8 mud, so they're only slightly worse, and then the chains aren't good at all. So I think I'm going to stick OHSs on off-roads instead of mud tyres, which, uh, which I don't like because those mud tyres should be much better than these just from the look of the tread on them but anyway the numbers are the numbers i'm going to buy some ohs's now i know friday in his videos raves about ohs's so that's what i bought get back to it daylight's wasting It, they'll do much better than the, the chains anyway. Regardless of anything else, they will do better than the chains. Coming out the indoor so it's a bit easier to get my trailer. Recording this one Sunday morning, so I've got to record and edit it today, ready for the Monday publish schedule. Got quite a chilled out Sunday morning, not not rushing. Just take my time, enjoy driving. I do everything I can to stick to a three video a week publishing schedule. Uh, sometimes the pressure is a bit much, and had this brief discussion on one of Friday's videos about 
if you're not enjoying it then it shows and people don't really want to watch and there's that sort of balance and pressure and the pressure's coming from me not from you guys but the pressure to feel like i'm sticking to my schedule has sometimes meant that i'll record when i don't really feel like it and i think that's come through in some videos so i am going to do my best to avoid that temptation and stick to making content when i feel like it like now enjoying a chilled out drive and if it takes me longer because i'm not rushing around trying to beat a deadline then fine But if it means I miss a video because I don't feel like it, then I already know from from past comments and feedback from you guys that you understand. But yeah, I'm not going to I'm going to do my best this year. If I'm not feeling it, I'm not recording it. probably should check where this has got to go. I have a pretty rough idea. In fact, because it's not lots of pickups from all over the place. Let's just activate the correct task. So this is recovering what's lost, I think. Yeah. So I've got to take this down. This road. I remember rightly, I have to hug right there to get through. Maybe try and follow that road down to this crossroads and then in there. Something like that. Feels like darts coming in. I didn't check the time when I was on the map then, but it was a bit dusky. So I've got a hug right here, I think. And it is a bit wet and sticky, so progress will be slow. Careful with that trailer, you're not looning it. you got to try and be a bit respectful of the fact that you got a big old trailer with a single axle front dolly. That's a bit antisocial. That's a track through there. What does that go in then? Just out of interest. It's pretty much too late for me on this map, but... Okay, so you could go across to that logging station from there. Bear that in mind when I come to do some logging. I'm just going to try and go straight through the middle of this road. At least there's lots of trees in the ground to winch from if I needed it. Definitely pulling better with these tyres, he says, as it gets a little bit stuck. But I think that's the trailer just caught on a tree. Also getting a little bit low on fuel. I thought I had plenty of fuel. Off that tree a little bit, give it a chance to fall into the ground. Nope, it doesn't want to play. Back off and take a slightly different line. I've not driven this truck for a while in general purpose use mainly because i used it to death in tamir and it's such a good truck but i wanted to experience other trucks and just you sort of mix up the, the playlist a little bit don't, i don't like driving just the same truck every episode but yeah this is such a good truck it may get a little bit more airtime in amur i think For something other than logging or crane work. I 
Right, I'm going to try and stay on the dry because I've got quite a long reach on this crane. I don't really need to get all the way in to do the unload because it's not a cargo box as such. Let's go into crane mode, get my legs down, get the camera up. I'm out of crane mode because I've got to unpack the cargo. <laughs> Back into crane mode. No, uh, maybe too far actually. Maybe I'm asking too much. I think I think I've over estimated how far out that crane. <laughs> I know it's got a reach, but it, no, no, I need it to reach the middle of that platform. So belay that. Restore the crane, repack the cargo, and pull forward a bit. That's more like it. Now, 65 litres, getting low. Now, do the crane. And I think that's probably good enough, but I'm just going to get it exactly in the yellow box. That is entirely, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe it wants to go a little bit that way to go central. is entirely inside the yellow box so I assume I've delivered it what now what's the task say Deliver it to the platform, which I've done. And then uh, maybe I have to... Okay, now that I've done that, unloaded from the platform. All right, okay, I understand. Got it. Great. We will not give up until this place becomes even more beautiful than, it, than before. And safer too. Thanks for your service. Sixty-six hundred dollars. Accept. Now I think I need to. I've turned that engine off a little while ago. But looking at those trees, I'm wondering if I can wade that and get across to the logging camp, and then from the logging camp find a preferable route out, rather than going all the way back. Because I'm I'm very low on fuel. That's what's worrying me now. Just turn it around. Somehow, turn it round. I'm going to run out of fuel, but I've got to bring... some trucks in this general direction anyway. For other tasks, I'm sure. So I'll just get as close to the garage as I can with the fuel I've got. I'm taking the red trailer because I want to take it down into Grainwoods. I don't know if I need it down in Grainwoods. But I'd rather take it and not need it than Vicky Verka, than vice versa. <laughs> just go anywhere. <laughs> just pick a line and drive and the Azov doesn't care.
for medium logging i've already mentioned as per suggestions in comments i am going to use the cat 746C for medium logs but that's currently in a muir with fuel in it so I'm going to have to do something with that as well Fuel is down to 10 litres. I'm going to leave it there. So we will jump into the pipe. New Horizons activated. And we'll have another go. A third attempt at this. We'll have another go. At getting this trailer plus cargo delivered. Time is it? Plenty of time for the minute. But no need to rush. Should have filled that as of up at this fuel station, but it was pretty much full when I started loading up the oversized cargo, so it's run out a bit quicker than I expected. What's my fuel like? Not too bad. I've got roof as well, so I'll push on with this. The sideboard's empty. Yeah, I'm not going too far. Tell you what, I will... Get that trailer on a rope. And then we will top up at $4 a litre, just because I'm not sure if I need fuel to put in the loaf that I've got to repair. So... And then off we go. Pull that in a bit tighter. Just down past the power plant. We haven't been down this way for a bit. Toe and ice, not central, is it? Anyway. This is probably, rather than buying a Land Rover, as much as I had fun with a Land Rover, this is probably how I should have done this task in the first place. Just go up there with a two slot self loading truck and tow the trailer on a rope. It would probably be quite a good trailer if you could attach it properly with a tow hitch. Because it hasn't got front axles so therefore it'll tow quite light I expect. Let me just check the map. Make sure I know where it is. I've got a zig up there. Right, new start. Here you are. Let's get your trailer in the box. And then cargo, vehicle spare parts unload. The trailer then despawned as if by magic. How many points does this... Um, I haven't got the points for this anyway. The loaf needs 188 points. I've got 34. Used all of those. Doesn't need any wheels. Right, so I've got to come back with something that can do 154 points. Does it need fuel as well? I was sorry with the engine running a lot to down I? Yeah, it also needs 80 litres. Let's just fill it up with fuel as well. Refuel. That's my roof empty. But the loaf is good to go. So the loaf just needs... 
154 repair points. And the step is empty of repair points now completely. It might even be the Zix is the only one I've got with repair points. So I never think about what I've got on this map that's got repair points left. Because my repair point resupply is down in Brainwoods River. And I've not been there with most of these trucks for quite a while. Maybe the Land Rover, but I think I used some of its repair points on itself. Just park this on the road for a minute. And let's see what else I've got. So the Force, I'm pretty sure, has got no repair points. Let's just check. Yeah, no repair points on the Force. The Land Rover has only got 35. I don't think it's got a trunk repair. Yeah, not enough. It's the Zix, really. I think. The Zix is down where it did the repair points. Yeah, it's got 215 repair points. So the Zix can do the job. But then I, I suppose the Zix probably wants to go back up there anyway to pick up the 8-slot trailer. Or whatever. So it's pitch dark. I am going to save you the pain of watching this. And I will drive this up to do that repair job. I'll keep the recording going in case anything funny happens. But generally, no, I am just going to drive this in the dark. And I'll see you guys in the daylight. Alright, so it's not daylight. But it didn't take me that long to drive over the map. So I'm just going to get this done. So repair can low. 154 points needed. Done. Hooray. Now I can get back on the road. Thanks for your help. Here's your reward. Who knows? We may say see each other again someday. Bye. Back at you, mate. $7,800. Nice. We got a cool quarter mil, pretty much. 250,000. Nice. And then I've just gone to close the task and, and hit repair at the same time, so... The points that I had left, they're all now in the Zix, which is probably no bad thing. So, right, that is, and it's 3 a.m., so we've still got a bit of dark to go. I think I'm going to deliver this log trailer, because like I said before, I am going to use a, a second truck as a powered trailer. So let's do that. pitch black though, isn't it? The trailer's parked down near the fuel station. Maybe a bit of cab view. Slightly better in the dark. I know we've been there, done that, but not very often I drive in cab view. There is a contest to think about as well, a cliff racing contest that I've not attempted yet. 
So I must make sure I do that before I leave the map. Don't know what my best truck is for that. I dimly remember watching what I believe is probably that cliff race on an episode of Mr. Lone Wolf. But I can't remember what truck he was successful in. Or what, he was, what truck he was most successful in. I'm not trying to pike on it. It's a bit of a rocky off-road. I don't know whether it's, I can't remember whether it's a big truck or a scout trail would be best. Anyway. Let's back her up. Can't see a thing. Can't see a thing. So we'll take advantage of drone cam. Can't see much even in third person. Attach a trailer and then I'm just going to get this delivered. Not worry about using the trailer for logging. Let's just make sure I know where to turn off. I think it's here. Probably down to here and across the beach. Reckon? Something like that. There's a couple of tasks where there's cargo to pick up off the floor. So I'll probably use the pike for that. We'll do a quick recap. So I know what's coming in the next episode. But I think there might be two tasks to pick cargo up. There's a contest and then we're probably into logging. Wake up, mate. Wake up. Logs coming in for you in your trailer. My driver can't sleep, why should you? So, probably unload the logs and then, yeah, the trailer's despawned. So, $5,600. Great, thank you. I can use it for my work. You're welcome, mate. Not a bad view at your little lake house. That wouldn't be a bad place to live, would it? Make sure you got some good flood protection. So, let's have a quick recap. Yeah, two tasks. One, one on each side of the map, if I remember really. Yeah. So we'll do... Two barrels of oil are just down near the railway somewhere, I guess. It's probably them there, isn't it? Both together. And they need delivering to... Oh, okay, so they need... That's another one that they need loading onto a platform, but that's fine. The pipe can do that. And then the other one is... Aftermath of the Hurricane, three lots of spare parts. And... They also look like they need to put it on a platform. And probably get the wooden framing while we're there. So that's a job for the pike. And then, as I said, there's this cliff racing. So it's so like a rocky cliff. I don't know. Scout or pike? Not sure. Maybe the pike. But that is going to be next episode. So I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you once again for the thousand subs. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope to see you in the next one where we'll finish off those two tasks, hopefully. Maybe have a crack at the contest and then it'll be logging to finish this map and then on to Greenwoods River. So that's the next few episodes of Agenda. Uh, hope to see you then. In the meantime, thanks and goodbye.